Hello and welcome to On Air with Odin, Game Mastering Pathfinder Dragonfall. Last week, we managed to get home and sell a bunch of stuff and check in with the guild. We found out that uh, Serena uh, was about to check in with the um, rest of the party that had basically left the city before you guys set off um, because he, they got wind that somebody um, who they, they literally just call the, the cult of the dragon um, has found some remnants of the dragons on the surface and is, is trying to resurrect one of them or we bought birth one of them it's not quite clear yet not quite sure if they're like bringing dragons back to life or if they're just using some dormant dragon's essence to start them from scratch But, as everyone knows, we can't be having the dragons regaining strength and numbers across the land, otherwise we may just have another, well, cataclysm. At least the evil ones, you know what I mean. Because, uh, not all dragons are evil, just a uh, surprising number of them. So. We're not evil, we're just misunderstood. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not evil, I'm just batshit fucking crazy. That's Carl, just ignore Carl. <laughs> in fact, I think in the last campaign of mine, you did meet the batshit crazy one. <laughs> I remember, yeah, I think it was a magma oh, dragon who was a chaotic neutral dragon. And I think you just met him, like he had his throne, but it wasn't really a throne, it was an opening to his lava pit beneath the floor you're standing on, his head just popped up. <laughs> yeah. That was interesting. That was back in like the elemental dungeon that led to the final fight at the the wizard college. For those who were there for that. Anyway, back to the current campaign. Um I saved this for the start of this session because a lot of people filtered out by the end of the last one. So what happened um, is that you got home, you took a bit of a rest after selling all the stuff, you had something to eat. Because uh, Celerice was still there, she was, you know, she's got her honey badger and you know, when people need it she's like, I guess I'll go to the kitchen. No, no one else is stepping up for that. Okay. <laughs> Like, she doesn't mind, but she kind of just, uh, is playful about it, I guess you could say. So, what happens now is that once you've done that, you, um, would join Serena in her room, which, if you detect magic, um, detect magic in here, you're gonna go blind. <laughs> because everything would glow. Turn off, turn off, turn off! <laughs> Tuffy would be so happy if she could see that. She'd be like, it's all shiny! <laughs> it's like, oh god damn it, I'm blind. <laughs> it's the last thing I ever saw, but damn it, was it pretty. <laughs> we'll be right back. Ah, okay. <coughs> so. With the very large uh, divining pool in the center of the room. Well, she has to take oh. okay. Serena actually um, heads over to it. Uh, like just looking at you and be like, all right, well, I need time to prepare this, so just don't touch anything. There's some rather volatile things here. No, oh, no, don't you start. Never fails. <laughs> Uh, 
preparing the uh, the divining spell across the pool, uh, Serena pulls off her hood, which is not something you see really outside of her room. And since she always seems to lock the door when she goes in her room, you don't really see it. Am um, I? Hello. Hello. So, um, as she takes back her hood, you of course just see her features more clearly, and you also notice the third eye on her head. But despite um, the rather uh, uncommon feature, she still, other than that, appears to be just a regular elf. Let's see. Uh, eh, I don't think Aaron would bother. Because, you know, he might be interested. So, like, wait, how did you get that? But, whatever. Um. Aren't you? would probably be trying to talk to the third eye. <laughs> okay. So, once the spell is complete, the, uh, the candles in the room actually go out. And the uh, the water in the pool clears to uh, a very definite moving set of images, complete with sound. And within the pool, you see Connor, the uh, Thorin, and Orlik, the uh, the the uh, the human fighter who seems to lead the fallen and the two dwarves that you met before just for any reminders of those. All of them in very heavy armor. And uh, they seem to be mid-combat. And they appear to be fighting what seems to be a rather pissed off, very pissed off in fact. Um, I wouldn't say young, but definitely not um, fully grown red dragon. In effect, I would say that he's probably at the the worm stage. Yeah, I think that would be fair. Then again, depends on how knowledgeable you are on uh, dragons, really. Being a dragon, of course, he's being a bit of a bastard and staying up in the air a lot of the time. Though uh, Ulrich seems to be throwing uh, some dark clouds at him that seem to be striking him with a lightning in attempts to ground him, I suppose. <coughs> and all the while, um, Connor has his longbow out and is just trying to fire arrows at his wings, just trying to ground the damn thing. Although, despite the <coughs> dangerous nature of the combat, I think the red dragon, being a red dragon, is rather confident in his abilities, therefore isn't showing any signs of just being like, you know what, screw this, I'm out. He seems pretty intent on killing them. Because... Well, when you're a dragon, you don't exactly know fear until something really strikes it in you. <laughs> okay, wait. Oh, wait, no. Sorry, I, it's not, it wouldn't be worm. That's, they put the, the age scaling out of order here. Alright, that's him, yeah. He's a young adult, for those who would know. I was gonna say, I was looking like, double check this, and I'm like, wait a minute. Ah, sorry, one second. Okay. Hello? Huh. That's some, just what Super Saiyan does now. I thought it sounded like Tommy was so screaming, but alright. <laughs> <laughs> what? You're, are you saying Tommy was so isn't a Super Saiyan? <laughs> Yes, we are saying he is not a Super Saiyan. 
<laughs> if he went well, Super Saiyan... I choose Saiyan, to believe otherwise. If Toyoso went Super Saiyan, he would look like Fabio. <laughs> Just a much skittier Fabio. <laughs> oh god. That's an image I really did not need. <laughs> it's an image that everyone could enjoy, whether watching live or recorded. <laughs> I don't even like Fabio, and that just ah, uh, why? Uh, but yeah. Okay. All the while, um, Connor is firing arrows, and Oleg seems to be using what seems to be an aggressive thundercloud to try and damage the dragon enough to get him to land. Uh, Thorin seems to be on the spot, just um, crafting runes to mark the weapons and armor of his allies. And he's doing so in with like surprising speed. Like he's doing it like one mark every round. <laughs> but uh, those who would know anything about Dwarven specific uh, practices well, we have to roll to find out. Serena isn't saying anything, she's just concentrating on maintaining the the image and the sound and also just taking in what she's seeing to make sure they didn't need any reinforcements sent. But they seem to have it well in hand. Like a good few strikes and a good few arrows to the main limbs of the dragon's wings. Um, it has to lower its altitude because it's having a bit of trouble maintaining it. But though of course the the breath and the breath that just he just scorches the ground and the the fall into are there with is just well terrifying. The amount of uh you can almost feel the heat coming through what you're seeing. Because it is not something that you would want to be able to face yourself. At least, definitely not yet. Connor! You Thorin barks up and he looks to him and goes, What is it, old friend? You know that thing that I said you'd never do again? Really? Yeah. Alright. And he, Connor puts his, um, Sets his uh, bow on his side as the dragon's swooping in for another breath attack. And now he's all ruined up. Thorin draws his weapon and basically letting out a battle cry, just be like, Aah! runs at the dragon, or at Connor more specifically, who then literally gives him a boost and tosses him up into the air. <laughs> Fastball special. Thorin just brings his weapon down and while flame is scorching his body, just smacks the dragon in the skull and grounds it. <laughs> and the second there's a freaking crash of impact, um, uh, Ulrich... Hi, doggy. <laughs> Sorry. Hi, dragon. <laughs> Hi, dragon. Ulrich tosses out his hands and, uh, what seem to be ethereal chains uh, bind over him and latch to the ground very quickly to try and make him not get back into the air, obviously. And with him, of course, immobilized Connor and Thorin to start wailing on the thing and beating it to a pulp. It's still able to flail and scratch, but within the next uh, few minutes or so, Okay, well, okay, well, after that, the dragon finally seems to stop moving, and with their foe defeated, they need to make sure, damn sure, that's not going to be coming back, so, everybody literally starts carving it up as much, too many pieces as possible, as well as using holy water to try and 
prevent any necromantic uh, influences in the area. Though such a thing only lasts so long and up to a point of power. And after the 10 minutes or so pass, Serena has to release the, the divining and looks to you and goes, well, I guess they found it. <laughs> Resi Fierce is staying there this entire time, just kind of like a grin on her face. <laughs> just watching like, ooh. So that's why they're not here. That's what they've been doing. But uh, yeah, unless you have anything else you want to talk about, I would like to get on with some things. No? Nobody? No. Okay. Uh, okay. Yeah, no, out my room. <laughs> Door's there. I don't think I need to show you how to open it. I'll. Uh... Dom is out the door, silently. Yeah, um... Tuffy goes. I mean. Mm. Okay. Well, I'll keep on trying to find Wilford for you, but maybe try and find some of his acquaintances around town and ask them. Um, there's that old fellow who owns the antique shop and, well, his apprentice often doesn't really know anything, so it's no real point. But you could try. I mean, look, I would try to help you more, but we've got other things to deal with, and honestly, that guy moves around so much, if we did find his location, there's no promise he would be there by the time we got there. I mean, I could keep an eye on him, that's kind of what I do, but messaging that to you would be uh, not tricky, but it would be constantly changing your travel path to keep up with him if he is on the move. Alright, I'm, I'm sorry, but I'm having a really hard time concentrating with the loud keyboard. Oh, it's Kiki. Okay. Oh, is it? Yeah. <laughs> I just noticed the blue frame around your, your image when there was the typing. Oh, my keyboard is like really far away from my mic. Maybe I'll turn down the gain on my mic and we'll see. Be right back. I smell eggs. How is that? Uh, it makes you really quiet. <laughs> uh, but not the keyboard? Type some. Did you can, hear it? We can still hear it, yeah. But not as loud, obviously. Yeah, it's just... Hear it a tiny bit. That's really bizarre, because my, my keyboard and my mic are nowhere near each other. Well, I just must have a really sensitive mic. That could be it, because, I mean, like I mentioned before, I mean, I have a webcam mic that I used to use, and there's a train that's like, it's quite a ways away from my house, but you could still hear it. <laughs> And you could also hear me typing over it too, so it's like. <laughs> well, I've turned down the gain some, so hopefully that'll keep it from being too loud. Alright, thank you. <laughs> I'm not sure if there is like a background cancellation option on Skype. I don't know. I about haven't Skype. found one. Nah. Damn, I'm back. Skype. <laughs> Welcome back. Welcome back. Fortunately, what I smelled was cooked eggs, not burning eggs. Yeah. It's always a bonus. Yeah. So heading out of Serena's room, you see Dylan and Anorax. 
who is the human rogue looking type and the gnome robed figure who seems to be a wizard of some sort. And uh, just coming in the door, quite literally, there's uh, the animus barbarian, Basque. Who uh, like walks in and he sees you and he kind of pauses for a moment, looks at Kreisha and he's like, shrug, because <laughs> he assumes that like someone else has given their approval or explained who that was, so he's not gonna bother. Cause what kind of animus is he? He's actually a. I think I said he was like a, a doba, like just a dog. Cool. Yeah, I think he said it was a Doberman. I actually didn't add that to the notes. But yes, he's got the uh, the long, rather the rather pointed, sharp snout, and the. the Tuppy just smiles really big and waves happily. He smiles and shows all those fangs and just waves back. So, uh, what, uh, how is your quest been going for this, uh, library, or, oh, I, I forget, I wasn't really trying. Kind of at a standstill right now. No. Eh, not, not so good so far. We, we haven't found out anything about the library yet. No, oh, well, uh, I hope something comes up soon. I, uh, not really my specialty investigation. <laughs> Tracking, yes, but not really over such, uh, great distances after so much time has passed since he left the city and so many other scents have walked over it. Fair enough. Uh, Dylan speaks up. Well, I, uh, I guess I could talk you over to his place, see if there's any hints in his, any of his paperwork, or maybe for once his apprentice might actually know something. Yeah, might as well. Certainly can't hurt to check. <sighs> Sorry. Yeah, I uh, I know a lot of the time adventures seem to plan out rather nicely and just seem to flow much better. And uh, you know, you you get to one place, you clear it out, you find a clue to where the next guys are, you keep going. But sometimes it just, sometimes you just have to wait for a clue. <sighs> But come on, um, I'm just chatting here. <laughs> he gets up and heads out the door, just basically trying to find something to do today. <laughs> and uh, heads out. Uh, board's there if you want it, but uh, I know you got this set goal in mind. And anyway, my voice just got more and more growly as that went on. <clears throat> Let me take a sip of coffee. <coughs> Okay, right. So he ha takes you over to the the old man's tower because it's one of the oldest buildings in the entire city, and of course he had to have it as his little home. He actually paid a great deal of money towards the building of the city and all that just for uh, well, just for being allowed to live there rather than have it put to a more militaristic use. And he heads to... Okay, let's see. Let's see. Divine's house. Let's go. I guess he would just take you to... Tom's just sort of along for the ride at this point. Yeah, Tuffy's kind of along for the ride until there's something specific for her to do. Yeah. 
Okay. Uh, that's pretty much how it is with Jen as well. Everyone's like, oh, come on, we gotta find some lead to find this guy. Come on. It's gotta be here somewhere. Let's just go. <laughs> um. So, upon coming to the tower, you are led inside. There's no real formality to it. I mean,. Dylan knocks on the door as he opens it, but he's not waiting there for anyone to answer because no one really ever does. Inside you see a young man. He seems to be... Uh, well, you can't really t tell what age he is unless you have uh, familiarity with halflings. But he's been studying quite hard at his books, looking over various maps and this complete mess of a table. I mean, this looks like it was a watchtower at first when the city was much smaller. But there's been like tables and other furnishings put around it, so it looks a little cluttered. And then there's also the paperwork, the map making tools, the various archaeological finds and pieces around. The arch, the arch, you know, the archaeological tools, just f wherever there was a place for it to fit, they put it there. <laughs> and uh, looking up, he's just like, "Hello, yeah, he's still not back, so sorry." It's like, dead and said, "Well, actually, these guys are looking for you, for the old man, so." You wouldn't have to know where he is, would you? Me? You think he tells me anything? No, well... Maybe. I don't know. I found some... notes that looked like they were just... dropped on his way out. I, uh... It doesn't usually put things on the floor, despite how cluttered things are around here, so it's a bit odd. But, um... It says here that... There was a temple of the old... Oh, what? What's perception? Yep. Yep. Tom's just rifling through shit. Giving no fucks. Alright. Like, yeah. he's kind of like looking at Tom when he's doing that, but he's sort of just, just trying to stay on track. He's like... But here, <laughs> um... Apparently there was some ancient <laughs> temple that was from before the cataclysm that he wanted to take a look at it's maybe have some long forgotten gods worshipped by there or some such historically necessary for the public to know information as he always says but here yeah, here's the and he's like hands over the note it's got kind of like a rough map on it but you can probably assume that he had a better map with it it just has like a an area like mm. not 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 like a full region but like a a part of a region mm. do you have uh, any other maps any larger maps where we might be able to identify this region more closely well funny shoes ask because I've been doing that same thing, just in case someone came around trying to know where he is, or maybe just for the fact that, for once, I might know where he is. <laughs> and he like, moves stuff around and just, like, has the map in front of him. He's like, if you're looking at the region on that note, and then you look at this map, it looks very similar to this part here. And he's just right. points uh... to it. I'm going to make a uh, knowledge geography check just to make sure that I see if I can match everything up and that's correct. Yeah, go ahead. Well, Tom is rifling through shit. He's not, like, tossing it everywhere. He's actually putting it back where it was. Yeah, he's like, he gets finds a stack of stuff, just looks at the top one, next one, next one, next one, just holding the rest of the pile in his hand as he's looking at the next bit, then putting it down again. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, he's not going to make an even bigger mess for this kid to clean up. He's going to at least be that polite. Yeah. Still, no fucks given. Okay. 18. 
you uh, take the region map and uh, the well, the region yeah the region map and the smaller map that's on the note, and you kind of look at it and you you turn it over, and Enfys puts it down, and you find that it's matching an area very close to where he had found, but basically this map turned at a different angle matches a spot near near to it more perfectly. Ah, uh, well you see, it looks like it's actually this region right here, if you just turn the map this way. He kind of just pauses and he's like, looking at it, looking at the map. Okay. Yeah, so it does. <laughs> and, uh... <laughs> I never thought to turn the thing over. I thought he would at least draw it with north pointing north. <laughs> never assume anything when you're dealing with, uh, I guess, people like this. I wonder if I can never I, find I don't him. Know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm always thinking, thinking practically, but I guess this doesn't really apply to him. <laughs> uh, but yeah, thanks. Uh, yeah, if you want to take this region map, it's it's not of any significance, it's just one of the ones made up uh, recently. It's not some ancient whatever map that he would yell at me for for giving me to. Well, we could still use it, thank you. Yeah, and uh... Alright, I'll take the region map. Mm -hmm. Does that have a weight or negligible? In negligible. Alright. And um, I don't think I actually have like a full on region map, but you in character don't really. You have one, therefore can travel. Man, that's what I forgot. I forgot to put like region maps for this uh, setting. But I think that's alright. Oh, I didn't move you on the city. Uh, it's all roleplay. I just guess <laughs> moving your tokens isn't mega important. Unless combat, but you know, whatever. Okay, you also, yeah, so you notice that uh, it's far to the uh, east. Because, like, you look at it and you see there's the jungle you landed in to the west. Um, well, to the northwest, spreading down towards the west and not quite, just to the coast. <laughs> and uh, the east road that heads straight out of town uh, would probably be your best bet. Um, I guess knowledge geography would be also for calculating travel times, best routes and stuff. Yeah, and then survival for actually following them. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, I guess I say to the rest of the party, well, it looks like I found a region that we can uh, go search for him. It's a ways east of here, but we should probably finish up seeing if we can uh, narrow that down or find any other possibilities as well. While we're still here. Looks over at Tom rifling through things. Have you found anything? I know, has he? That and our librarian is just glad that he's keeping things orderly. <laughs> you find a few things that have been pretty much commissioned by the Fallen, <laughs> such as uh, various little maps on known ancient dragon burial sites. And uh, there doesn't seem to be anything on an ancient library that you can find. But there's bits and pieces here of like... Uh, Places of historical significance around the region. Yeah, taking all of those. If he's got some spare parchment around and a pen, I'll actually copy them. But if he doesn't, I don't care. <laughs> um, <laughs> it, those are... Uh, <coughs> those were commissioned maps, I mean... I do have some spare parchment and some ink if you want to just to copy them or 
maybe add them to the yeah. uh, the region map. It's just door tables, <laughs> please. Get them. Okay. Apologize for him. <laughs> well, thank you. <laughs> he says he's he's just a bit brusque. I noticed. And he gets some matte paper and uh, well, some parchment and the quill and the inkwell. But he also puts out a pencil if he would rather. Tom will diligently fill in the map and copy all the information. Okay. I guess that would probably be like a skill check, but. Hmm. Uh, let me see. Ba -da -ba -da -ba -da. Craft map making. I don't know what we'll use. Like survival? To make him a good map? Yeah, that'd be a survival check. Hmm. And he'd be taking 20 on it, so. Yeah. So, so that would be a 22. Nice. You make a very decent map. You, uh. Managed to get down all the details onto the the parchment and feeling satisfied. You feel you don't really need the bits and pieces. You've got it down onto yeah. Look. And once all the once all the dragon sites and all the historical bits and bobs have been copied over to the to our larger map, he places all the pieces very carefully in the commission pile. Uh, kind of surprised by you actually taking the care to do that, despite your your brash your like roughness. He kind of just goes, "Well, thank you for putting it back there. It's, uh, it's uh, very nice of you." And again, uh, you're welcome for the map and all that. And I hope that for whatever reason you need to find him, you find him, and that he's safe. All right. Well, what does everyone think? Uh, should we just head out? For for a trek of this long, it's best that we get some camping gear. Oh, true. And... At least some. It's not a bad idea. Camp. All right. What kind of camping gear do you have in mind? I've never been camping, Mike. <laughs> What's camping? Wait. I read about it in a book. Rising Phoenix goes, we need shelter, we need food, we need water, we need means of getting more of all of these. <laughs> well, the water won't be a problem. I can create that for us. Okay. And she's like, she's as she's making the point, she's actually like doing like one finger, two finger, three finger, and then she like pushed one of the fingers down when you said that you can create water. <laughs> well, we should also make sure we're ready for this. Um, unless we're on a time limit, I've got some potions I'd like to make up. I don't. I have to go get my doggy's armor. Of course. Oh, yes. Yes. So, yeah, definitely have some time. He looks at, um, damn it, what's her name? The Bird Barian. The Bird Bear. Yeah. <laughs> Rising Phoenix. He looks at, right, yeah, you just said her name like five minutes ago. I'm like, derp. <laughs> uh, he looks at Rising Phoenix. What kind of shelter would you recommend? Well, usually if we're in forest or jungle like home, then we just make shelter. But I guess you need supports and weatherproof cloth to make shelter that you can I believe pack away. it's called a tent. I read about this. So have I. Perhaps <laughs> a pavilion <laughs> instead. <laughs> Sarcasm is unbecoming to you. Well, that wasn't sarcasm. It, it just reeked with it, though. No. <laughs> They're just drawing on theoretical knowledge at the moment. Yeah, no, I've never been... There's no reason to ever camp or anything when we were in the dragon, so... 
<laughs> the only thing I know of it is through reading. Tuffy's a ferret. She's like, you mean sleeping on the ground? I, I do that all the time. Like, that's just where you sleep. <laughs> Perhaps a pavilion would be better than several tents. We definitely don't want to be tents, no. Oh. Ow. Come on, it's an obvious pun. Yeah. Yeah, it was. Even so, ow. <laughs> That's why there's dead silence right now, apart from the sounds of pain and anguish. <laughs> Wrong tense? Oh. I kind of missed it, so I'm sorry. Oh, you're lucky. You're one of the lucky ones. I'm sitting here with this gold. I'll just pay for the stuff, by the way. Right. It's not like pavilions and. Shall we? Let's let's <laughs> go check out what they have then. Um, like creature, like holds a hand hand up, telling you to pause basically. And mm -hmm. uh, she gestures to the map that you have, the, the region map. And yeah, uh, what about it? So she kind of points to where you're planning on going. And then she points to herself, and she points, uh, like, far to the northeast. And kind of looks at you, and she takes some parchment and a pen, and she's like... Uh, she would just start writing. Oh, uh, Breakman Z said, with all this talk of pavilions, we should just be glad nobody's mentioned a gazebo yet. Oh, God! <laughs> That's exactly what I was thinking. I'm just sitting here thinking, oh god, I don't want to make a joke. I don't want to make a joke. I don't want to make a joke. Mm. We might not have heard of gazebos. Attack the gazebo! I send a flaming arrow at it. What does it do? Well, now it's on fire. The party was defeated by an inanimate object. <laughs> oh, I don't know. I think if the party made it inanimate, then they kind of won. <laughs> I think it should be life. Yes, that's a me. joke. My bad. Well, that's that's fine, Krisha. Honestly, I'm I'm kind of surprised you uh, came along with us. I was I assumed that you had your own things to get back to. Tom bows. Of course, of course. <laughs> Tom bows quietly and deeply to Creature. Well, I wish you a safe journey. Creature bows deeply and respectfully, and she puts on her hat. Seems the sun's quite bright today. She like puts on the actual like the white samurai hat just to keep <laughs> the shade off her because she's not exactly got the most sun-resistant skin. Mm. Enfys very awkwardly bows because it's something he doesn't do and he's not sure like how deep to bow <laughs> like that so it just it looks really awkward <laughs> looks like a drinking bird for a minute <laughs> you, you just kind of hear to sort of like and she's like can't really vocalize her laughter but you just hear the breath coming out <laughs> Jen considers sad. for a moment just kind of pushing on his back end a little bit <laughs> She, she walks over and she goes up to him first and she uh, she like puts his arms straight against his back, uh, his, his sides I mean, and then kind of like puts one hand on his, his chest and one on his lower back and kind of puts him at the right angle and then, <laughs> and then she sort of just sits back, looks at him and just puts a thumbs up. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and then all and of a sudden he's stuck that way for the rest of the adventure. 
I was going to say, Enfys uh, stays at that angle for a bit longer, like not quite sure, and then slowly <laughs> <laughs> it goes back straight up. Rising... Sidechar just nods politely to her. Mm. Rising... Any more than that is... Sorry, no. No, go ahead. We're doing her bed. Yeah. Rosie Phoenix just thumps her chest and, like, with just thumps the the uh, the end of her great axe is shaft on the ground. What is the, the pommel? Yeah. Does that still count yeah. for when it's that big a weapon? Yes. Yes, okay. I was wondering if there's a different term his... from it. it. It's... Yeah, it's like Gorgier. It doesn't matter how big it is. It serves the same purpose. Okay. And with that, Krisha just heads out the door and just filters into the crowd. Alright. So what were we doing? Right. Shelter. We buy... Per... Per... Pavilion. Shelter. <laughs> she, said, she couldn't remember how to pronounce the word. It's just like... Pavilion. I'm not familiar with that word. <laughs> so, shall we? Hmm. Yeah. Head to the market district. Market district! You arrive at the market district. I don't know why I made that uh... slightly musical. <laughs> <laughs> Alright. So, what should we just get first? Like, just equipment? Do we Well, we probably want to hold off on getting food, don't we? At least for right we now. Want, we want to get food last. Okay. Tuffy's going to break off and just go pick up the, the armor from the armorer real quick and then come back. Because okay. she's already paid and everything. As long as he's got it ready, it should only take a minute. Yeah. He, uh, when you reach the armorer, he looks to you and looks at the dog and he just smiles and goes, Ah! There you are. Alright. Well, bring him over here. I just gotta make a few final adjustments. And she'll send the dog over and tell him to do whatever it needs to be done. And he brings out the uh, the chain mail, I believe it was. Yep. And he, and he sets it on the dog. And it just like slumps straight on, and then he like gets the, the straps and does them up so that they will, won't really shift about too much in combat and then just kind of gives a little bit of slack onto like the excess of the, the strap and then just trims it off on the end and makes sure it's not going to um, flay at the end. It goes over the bits and there's a, a bit of joint reinforcement because just chain on its own needs something more to cling on to. Um, <coughs> at points, otherwise it's just gonna slink about and probably just not sit right on the dog. So there's like, on his, sh his uh, I guess his shoulders and hip joints, there is um, a bit of plate, like just like shoulder and uh, kind of like horse armor, you know, where they have like over the, yeah. the back and the shoulders, they have a bit of extra reinforcement. It looks almost like a bit of slight scale mail over them. And he gets this this bit this block of what seems to be uh, uh, basalt, you know, freaking volcanic rock. And just yeah. slides it between the the plate of the armor and the dog, and uh, gets his hammer and just tempers it a little bit just to shape it better for his joint. And uh, he's even got a little hat. <laughs> <laughs> like he's just goes uh, just plunks straight down either side of his ears, little strap under his chin when chain going down his neck to join with the rest of the armor. And he's like, right, go have a run around or something, pooch. See ya. <laughs> cool. If it nicks you any places, then just let me know. Thank you! If it needs any adjustments, I'll still be here all day. So she gets the dog to run around a little bit, make sure it doesn't fall off, and then she runs around back to the group. Hmm. <clears throat> Bruiser doesn't complain of any points that are like pinching or angled wrong, so it kind of jabs him when he runs. He seems to be perfectly happy with it. 
Cool. He kind of growls and barks, just feeling kind of badass right now. <laughs> He's like, yeah, I like this. <laughs> he shows his doggy approval. And then whittles on a fire hydrant. <laughs> <laughs> That's, that's I what... suppose it would be completely inappropriate to say he's now one badass son of a bitch. Oh. <laughs> Actually, that one I kind of liked. <laughs> <laughs> and yes, of course, as part of the making sure it's functional for everyday use, he has to go whiz on something in the armor just to make sure that doesn't cause any problems. <laughs> <laughs> it's part of day-to-day -day life. <laughs> Well, if the doggy seems happy, she's going to rejoin the party. And get some of this camping gear she's heard about. <laughs> Canned ping gear. Multipass. Like Multipass. Multipass. <laughs> Sorry, that's kind, of, that's kind of what I've been picturing. It kind of pictures what... It's what comes to my mind when Rising Phoenix is struggling with words. It's just her trying to say, like say multi-pass over and over. <laughs> okay, so we're looking at goods and services, camping material. So we have. <coughs> So you head up to the, the uh, I guess it would be the adventuring, no, just the guy who has outdoor supplies. And let's see, where is it? Cause it's, yeah, there it is, camping is just under adventuring gear. You are looking for comfort and shelter. Tent pavilion is 100 gold, but it's big enough for all of us. <coughs> yep. Which means we wouldn't need more than one. Sounds good. We just have to figure out who's going to carry it. A horse. <laughs> yeah, I have a horse. Well, that would work. We would get a horse to carry that. It's fifty pounds. Yeah. We got a. We need to get a horse to carry it. <laughs> or a dwarf if we had one. Yeah. <laughs> if we had one. It just sounds so I am not like going this. to say a word about the war. <laughs> just going to look at him. Uh, if we want no, some, if we want some a... creature comforts, we can get a couple of folding chairs. They're not expensive. There, there's a running gag in my game involving a dwarf. That's why we're just sitting here like, oh. So, Tuffy is, like, looking around at all the stuff the shop offers, and she sees a, a display hammock hanging up, mm. and she goes, What is that? Oh, I use one of those. They're very good. Can I can I try it? She looks at the shopkeep, like, really intently. Um, sure. <laughs> Shop owner says, how, like, this person's never seen a hammock before. What? <laughs> He's like, uh... Sure, just, just, you have to kind of do it in one motion, just flop yourself in there. Okay, she's, she's really dexterous, so, uh, so <laughs> I'm gonna, uh, but I'm still gonna roll and see if she makes it the first time, because it is a hammock and they're very difficult. Yeah, so, like so a, let's a see. Climber she'll climber acrobatics, do a... one of the two. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's she'll, acrobatics. She'll do an acrobatics check to see if she can make it into the hammock. Yeah, she makes it into the hammock. She floops into the hammock and the fabric just kind of, you know, molds around her as it, you know, you know what hammocks do. Yeah. She, she kind of... Those kinda... have the metal to keep them apart. Yeah, she kind of, she kind of squiggles around in there a little bit and gets comfy and curls up a little bit. And then she goes, oh my god, I have to have one. I need one. I need one now. <laughs> All the Where has this been is... all of my life? <laughs> all the show keeps seeing is like arms flailing out of this this hammock as she's expressing this. <laughs> yeah, she's very animated about it. She's like, oh my god, I need one. Fortunately, so they're fairly cheap. 
She's that, definitely gonna buy herself a hammock. That, and Fizz is pretending he doesn't know her right now. That, Dude, oh. <laughs> she's a ferret and it's a hammock. These things are like infus and cheese, okay? <laughs> She's gonna spend uh, don't old... worry, it's heavy. I'll, 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 I'll buy it for you. I, I'm buying the camping stuff, by the it's way. It's a silver piece. Yep. Yeah, yeah, I mean, but, I, I, yeah, I didn't yeah. buy anything last game, so I'm gonna be nice and buy our gear this game. Yeah. Oh, well, Just try to be nice, guys. Thank you! Did you, mm. also, did you, like, think of anything during the week that you might have wanted to, to buy? Not particularly. Okay, just, just checking before we... I, I my <laughs> mind has not been on the game Shoot, at all this week. Yeah. So. I just pictured Tuffy just like getting in the hammock, jumping out the hammock, getting in the hammock, jumping out the hammock. <laughs> yeah, she's she's being extraordinarily ferretish at this moment. She's <laughs> like, oh my god, it's a hammock and it's the greatest thing ever. Shuffle over this side of the hammock, shuffle over that side of the hammock. <laughs> we'll take this one. <laughs> Um, you sure so what you would happen if we set up like an entire row of hammocks? Chaos. I don't think that all fit under the tent. <laughs> well, no, but actually, under a pavilion, given the amount of supports it has, it might actually work that way. Because you can hang hammocks over each other. And Frist does not trust this hammock thing. <laughs> it looks like an un. It's just is like a monstrous cloth death drinking machine. And <laughs> this is not acrobatic enough to want to test it. In that case, he's probably better off with a cot. Jeez. Realistically. Mm. Well, uh, I'm assuming you've got some form of pack animal to carry all this because. Well, unlike your typical bed roll, a cot, like, weighs. Good thirty pounds each. I I, I have a horsey. All right. Well, if you're gonna be like, I mean, yeah, did I hear you guys talking about a pavilion? Uh, yes, actually. All right. We are interested in purchasing one. All right. Well, I do have a few. I don't keep many in stock at a time because the size, pretty much. Uh, Understandable. But they're a hundred gold each. Uh, they weigh a good fifty pounds, and. Uh, they take a bit of getting used to setting up, but y you'll get it. There's a bit of parchment included in the bundle just to give you a good idea of what goes where. Excellent. Hey, uh, quick question. At the, uh, at the stables and stuff, is there like a, a cartier or something near there? Yeah. To sell carts and stuff? Yeah, there's at the warehouse. Um, okay. Okay. T Tuffy says, uh, I'll, I'll buy us a cart so that Blondie can pull a cart and then we can carry all the stuff we want. Is the area we're going to suitable for carts? Uh, it's not in the jungle. Yeah, from, from your well, geographical close. knowledge, you do know that they're, well, from emphasis, geographical knowledge. <laughs> he knows that there's pretty much roads to these places, but then would have to go off-road for a few hours to get to the actual spot of the the supposed dig site. <laughs> but as much as there's rocky spots here and there, it doesn't look like it gets to anything extreme. It's a fairly uh, flat, recovering from being completely charred planes. <laughs> yeah, we might as well pick up a bundle of torches while we're at it. I miss you. A torch is a copper piece of per. Okay. So, like, a bundle would be, what, a silver to a gold piece? For, for like, how the... Many we got? What is it? One or two people who don't have <laughs> like dark vision or uh, at least low light vision. Well, yeah. Wouldn't it well, be less risky to have covered flame inside the pavilion? Well, I'm not. I'm not thinking lanterns? about. Not thinking about lighting up the inside of the pavilion with the torches. Oh. 
Well, you can create a fire inside of the pavilion. It, it even states it in the yeah. description. Well, Put she's just, fire. you know, she's talking yeah. in character, sort of, like, you know. Yeah. Shelter materials plus fire Ooh. doesn't work mix well. You have to be careful with your fire. Yeah. I meant not just for when paying attention, but for sleeping. Well, I guess one of us always be awake, so... Uh... Yeah. Hmm. <laughs> I mean, I suppose we could spend, like, a couple of silver pieces and get a few lamps. I don't Can't see if you why want. not. Yeah, how about, um, six lamps? That way we can space them pretty evenly around our camping area. And as long as we have fuel, they reusable, not just burn out mm -hmm. and have to make a new one. Good idea. Ah, she she kind of just kind of crosses her eyes. And she's a, yeah, I had a good idea. <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna have to carry a bunch of lamp oil too, but that shouldn't be a problem. Mm -hmm. Lamp oil is useful for so many things. Uh huh. Like burning hives of eggs. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So, I, I'm keeping track of how much we've got here. Alright, so we need, uh, you want six lamps, that's six silver. You want, uh, do you want, um, you said making fire, we do have, uh, pre-cut firewood, or has one of you got a decent axe just to do that out there? Well, if there are trees to be had. I mean, lamps are good for light, but not really for cooking. Yeah, it's probably good to have a starter bundle. Is Tuffy like at this point still just rolling around in the in the hammock? <laughs> yes. <laughs> that's kind of She'll like, be doing that for a while. It's kind of why the shop keeps kind of like so. Yeah, uh, that's it's kind of like I just keep looking over to Tuffy. <laughs> it's like, uh, because again, ferret head, Amazonian buff body. <laughs> so it's kind of like, yeah. brr, 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 making quite a noise, <laughs> just rolling around. Yeah. Uh, okay, well, I sell them in bundles, like for a good day's worth of firewood, but I don't know how commonly you use it. It lasts as long as, well, you ration, I suppose. But, uh, one pavilion, that's 100 gold. You wanted cot or just regular bedrolls, or did you want some more hammocks? Tom, um, al Tom already has a hammock, so he's good on that. I think Genevieve will take a hammock. I don't already have one. Yeah, I'll give it a shot if I don't have one too. What does Enfys have? Oh, that's right. I have that weird cantrip that lets you make a bed. Oh, neat. It was in the third party one. It's so you're, so that you're way pretty I didn't much covered. To... Yeah, <laughs> so that way I just, just didn't have need to use two the more hammocks. No, it, kind well, of it wouldn't work up. in a dungeon. This does Aaron have a hammock? Hmm. Does Aaron have one? I don't know. I have to. <clears throat> so, I should also check in with the chat because. Oh, no one's there. Alright. Because sometimes I like keep forgetting to go back to that tab and people are like, hey, I'm talking. <laughs> Ugh. Okay, so we have. Aranam has. a bedroll. 
that's it. <laughs> so he could benefit from a cot or a hammock. Let's see. Oh, uh, what the hell? Three more hammocks on top of it. Thunk, thunk, thunk. Poor Aaron. Well, I would hope that they don't <laughs> make that noise. So. Well, they're all folded up and everything. Wait, so there's four hammocks. Yep, four all together. And the pavilion, and we wanted to get tor uh, torches. Uh, I, I didn't figure in the lamps. Shit. Six lamps. Don't mind me. Paladin's just over here cutting herself out. Six silver pieces, no torches. Oh, so. silver. And more oil for the lamps. Okay, so 100 gold. Six. No, 12 silver. And oil is. researching. I think oil is copper, I believe. I, don't uh, think, I think it much. depends on how much oil you're getting. Yeah, that's what I said. I don't know exactly. Yeah, it's just somewhere. Uh oh. Oh, did you want those uh, those folding chairs? Just like, I guess if like, you're reading and don't want to be <coughs> laying down while you're doing it, or standing, or sitting on the ground. And this is a druid. He's better with sitting it on the ground. <laughs> I thought the fuel would also just be with the. Uh... With the rest of the illumination. Oh, you wanted some firewood, by the way? Yeah, it's a copper for bundle. Yeah. Uh -huh. Just for cooking purposes, in case there aren't any trees around for you to cut down. Uh, lamp oil, lamp oil. Oh, that's right. I remember having to do this when I was searching for it. It's actually in the alchemical creation section. Oh, I guess that makes sense. Um, so, lamp oil, one silver piece. Uh, it's a pint. Like a silver piece per pint. But we're spreading it across six lanterns, so... Burns for six hours in a common lantern or lamp. Lamp section. Do -do 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 -do. A lamp burns for six hours on one pint. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's what I just said. That's what he just said. Yep. <laughs> That's what he just said, damn it! <laughs> so we won. It's okay, we've got an echo. Do we want... Right, what's that? Right. So we would want six, six of them per night if we're using all the lamps. Yeah. Hmm. So we're gonna wanna... We're gonna pretty much want a good supply of oil. So yeah. So... 60 golds worth? Wait, no. Six. 60 gold worth of No, six gold That'd worth. That'd be a lot of oil. Six <laughs> gold worth, I meant to say. <laughs> 600 um, pints of lamp oil. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, so 60 pints to give that 60 hours per lamp. And that's just burning it constantly, time. Yeah, that should easily do it. Six god, not sixty. <laughs> Sorry, I'm just <laughs> distracted. Distracted by your friend there, yeah. <laughs> She's really enjoying that hammock. She could probably use it as a swing too. Like, like. Wait, it swings? Don't... Doesn't it? The way you've been wiggling it, I think so. Don't swing uh, it too much. We get a warranty on that. <laughs> <laughs> That's I don't think there are any warranties on ferrets. This, this is the, I mean, that's the display one. Don't swing, otherwise you're going to be bumping into other stuff and hurt yourself. Aww. You can swing on your own one when you set it up outside with plenty of room. Yay! 
<laughs> and because, because, like, because of like Tuffy rolling around in the hammock, Bruce has been kind of like going, just like, kind of like jumping up at it and bumping nose on it, and just being like, "What you doing? What you doing? That was like fun. What you doing?" <laughs> <laughs> That's of course she told him to stop, then he would because he's a good boy. Mm. All right. Okay, so we have <laughs> a lot of oil. Oh, um, did you want me to like? get all this together while you go get the cart because it's gonna be a lot to carry all the way to the warehouse yeah Tuffy will like offer to go get the cart as long as she can have her hammock as soon as she comes back all right, well, <laughs> hold on a sec and she he, he writes out a bit of paper and he hands it over that's for that'll give you permission to use the the freight lift okay thank you and her and the doggy will go off to the stables to get the horse and the cart. To the cart, to the cart, to the cart, cart, cart. Why do I think that she's going to get a couple of uh, poles stuck onto opposite corners of the cart, string her hammock in between it, and have way too much fun while someone else is driving the cart? But then she couldn't ride the horsey, and that's much more fun than a hammock. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Is there anything else you think we might need, Tom? Oh god, don't put the horse in a hammock, please. <laughs> well, <laughs> Riding we... the horse in a hammock. I I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, uh. Alright, so I'm unclear on the uh, firewood. Were we actually picking some of that up, too? Yeah. Uh, how much of that? Um, what, two copper pieces worth? So, two days worth? So, yeah. That'll give us a good starter set. Okay. Okay, so round that up. It's uh, 107 gold, 2 silver, 2 copper. And... Okay. Yeah. Also, do you think uh, your friend... I mean, does your friend have enough money for the cart, and maybe... It's 15 gold. Yeah, I mean, oh. she's she's got plenty or she wouldn't have left, so, I mean, it's like, it's fine. Yeah, and I'm sure... Tom one could afford a it. cart. Yeah. <laughs> oh, All right. actually, now that we have, you know, some more disposable cash once we get back out to the stables, Enfys is thinking about just purchasing a horse. Hmm. Which Tom still can't do, but we've got a cart so he can ride that. <laughs> yeah. I still kind of want to buy one, but I don't know if it's my best interest right now. Well, it's, it's the thing, is that, like you can get a bigger cart for all of you to sit in and still have the cargo if you've got a second horse to pull it. You know, it depends on what you want to go for. That would be a wagon. Oh, we're going to play the wagon. <laughs> But anyway, actually, I mean, that's... actually, that might be useful in case we have somebody majorly injured again. True. Question okay. is, how much do we want to spend on a wagon? 50, 75, or 100? I can cover the extra. I mean, I have enough money to buy any of them, so we just need to decide what we want to buy. Somebody catch Tuffy. Oh, <laughs> God. Okay. Uh, what which what was decision uh, heavy one or just bring her back to talk? Um, hold on. Let me let me research the wagons first. In the meantime, though, was there anything else that we were buying from this place? Um, if they've got any of those padded potion cases, I'd like to get at least one, if not two. Let's see. A light wagon only requires... You cut out, Ben. Two medium creatures or one large creature, who's going to say, because of... I'm looking at it now. <clears throat> right. Uh, medium wagon, which might be our speed. Yeah, because horses are large, aren't they? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah, medium wagon can also use one large creature. Uh, medium wagon, four medium or two large creatures. 
So if we've got two horses, four, then that'd be fine. Four medium or one large. I'm looking at this CMD right now. Wait. Wagon medium. Wagon medium says four medium or two large, and wagon it's... light says two medium or one large. Let me show you. Are you on a different page to me? Probably. Um, no. I think so, but I'm on the same page. I'm seeing four or one. That's the page I'm on. Oh, weird. So is the other one two medium or one large? Yeah, I think just a horse can I... handle up to a medium. Yeah. I'm... That's... That would make sense. Actually, well, what's the heavy? Actually, what the you... heavy says four medium or one large. I think huh. that's a pro yeah, because on this page, where in the uh, the transport section of the goods department, a heavy wagon carries up to four thousand pounds of cargo and is pulled by either eight medium creatures or four large creatures. Yeah, I'm thinking it's a typo in the um, descriptions that they like copy pasted. Yeah. Yeah, so we probably want like a medium wagon for the two large creatures to pull it. Yeah, yeah, we're gonna need that. Yeah, there's there's no way light, medium, and heavy all have the same propulsion requirements. <laughs> Not unless those are mechanical horses. <laughs> we're gonna go freaking Bioshock Infinite on us. So yeah, medium wagons probably our speed. Okay, is this decision? Medium. Extra horse. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. And then Rising Fuse just bolts. Because <laughs> she's got 50 foot move speed. So she's just like, zoom. <laughs> Which also means we only need two horses. Yep. Because we well, can already all got one. ride in the wagon. Bless <laughs> <laughs> you. All right. Well, Excuse I'm gonna start getting the stuff together, and uh, I'll be moving it to the to the uh, the loading and unloading section over here. Yeah. And he goes to like the back of the tray place where there's less people and more wagons coming in and out. It's like this little field here. You see, there's like that does gap anyone, in the back of it. Does anyone have a camping kit on them? Not camping. A uh, cooking kit. Uh, I believe I have one. I think it came in my adventurer's kit that I bought. I've got okay. an iron pot and a mess kit, but... Okay, it's... we're covered then. Yeah, I've got that same thing, so we're good. I, I needed to make sure that we didn't have something else that we needed to grab before mm. all the loading. With all that's been going on, Rising Phoenix even still has some mead left. <laughs> That's mostly because, you know, she's not just drinking it every day, she's drinking it when there's something to drink about. And rations, I think she still has quite a few because we, we made new rations. Yeah, though we are kind of probably starting to get low considering where we're going, so... Yeah, so probably be best to pick up some more rations and hunting gear. Yeah. <clears throat> And I guess a fire, um, a, uh, a wood axe, just for yeah. if we do need to stock up for more firewood. Probably a good idea. Because we want something that's uh, splitting, not cleaving, like the great axe. <laughs> I mean, they're the same thing, but you know. Different Granted, switch. that great axe could probably take down a tree in one swipe, but still. Only if you're lucky. Or is seven foot six. <laughs> <laughs> seven foot six and built out of muscles. Yeah, but no, I mean, you, it'd still take a reasonably good strength roll to cleave a tree. Okay, All right. So this place that we're buying the hammock and everything else from. Mm -hmm. We need to get what else? That's what I've been asking this entire time. Uh, from there, I think you're done. 
Alright, so Genevieve it's... puts the money on the table and is like, here you go. Yes, that's 107 <laughs> gold, 2 silver, 2 copper. I'm keeping a note of it as we go along, because I know other stuff to do. So, then we have... Uh, I guess we'd, we'd go to the... The butchers, the bakers, the cheese and makers. And the candlestick makers. No, cheese makers. <laughs> They're already there. <laughs> oh yeah, adventuring gear is the candlestick makers, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. Elimination. Uh, uh, well, there's also the the actual candlestick maker who makes the fancy scented candles and the fancy magic candles that have different colored flames. <laughs> Exciting. Uh, blue ones. I want blue ones. Tom's going to pick up a cookbook for beginners along with some cooking supplies. I mean, this As in, you know, like flour and salt and other basics. Basic general cooking supplies and a bunch of like yeah. dry goods that won't go off and stuff like that. Yeah, he's actually going to try and learn cooking. Sounds like a good Lesson idea, one. Tom. Don't you willing to share time. the book or? Oh yeah. He's willing to share the book with anyone who wants it. Tom, okay. Tom teaches Rising Phoenix how to read a bit better. Rising Phoenix tells him how to cook. <laughs> 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 well, she's not the best at it, but she, she, <clears throat> she has done it. <laughs> that's, that's something, right? Right. Salt, assorted herbs and spices. Yeah. Okay. Um, I'm looking for like s such a uh, supplies in the goods and stuff. Supplies. Supplies, motherfucker. I'm I'm very annoyed. What? Because I've been looking over the. Because it makes sense for Tuffy to want to be like a mounted combatant. Yeah. But the the Pathfinder rules for mounted combat are kind of annoying, especially if you're using a ranged weapon. Yeah, you got to get certain feats or be a certain class. Well, I mean that's that's fine if if like getting certain feats, but even with the feats, I'd still take negatives to my archery. Even with the feats, even like there's the never a way to get rid of a negative to your archery while being mounted. Really, I thought there was an arch like a horseback archery feat. There is a feat called mounted archery, but it only halves the penalty. You can never get rid of it, as far as I can tell. What is the penalty? Um, it's normally a negative four um, if, you're, if your mount is just moving, and a negative eight if your mount is running. Oh. Wait, so if your mount is standing still, then do you take any penalty? I don't know. It doesn't say. It just says. Um, it doesn't say. Therefore, I'm going to say no. Oh, you can you can <laughs> use ranged weapon while your mount is taking a double move, but at a negative four penalty. Okay, so apparently, if your mount isn't moving, it's just normal. Okay. Yeah. All right, I read that wrong. Also, if they're, they're moving just a single move action, then you don't take a penalty. Okay. Okay, that's good. So you could right. get mounted combat and then get. Mounted archery. Well, apparently mounted combat um, doesn't... Like, you don't have to have a feat to be mounted and do combat. No. You have to take a feat to... Um, mounted combat as a feat only says that you can um, use your ride check to negate a hit that is aimed at your mount and aim it at you instead. Or, or dodge it or whatever. No, you dodge it. Yeah, you, you rear your horse to avoid the blow. So it doesn't mean that that you have to take a feat to do mounted combat at all, but it just helps you to take that feat if you are going to be doing mounted combat. Yeah, I'm just saying that it's I say take take mounted combat purely as a prerequisite for mounted archery. Okay. Yeah. Um, but I guess actually, if you're only doing just a single move, then there is no penalty to need halving. So you wouldn't really need mounted archery. Well, what I'm saying is that you have to have mounted combat to take mounted archery. Yeah. Um, but neither of the feats says you have to take this feat in order to do mounted combat, period. Oh, no. No, no. That's the thing. It just, it just helps you with mounted combat. 
Yeah, because even like, uh, it's it literally just, it's something people can do. They just need to make right checks when they take damage, otherwise they fall off and stuff like that. I think okay. I believe that. Because I have enough money to buy a, a combat trained horse. And so I was thinking of doing that while I was getting the cart. Then so, we could have two horses and a cart. So you got your, your cute little riding horse, and then you got the big bite horse. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> and so you're like the, the cute one's going to be going, like, hey, so we're pulling a cart. And the other's going to be like, just don't, please. <laughs> I'm pulling a cart. Yeah. This is my job. We don't need to keep talking to one another. But hey, look, the sun. Oh, squirrel! <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Pretty much. Pretty much. <laughs> okay, I'm just checking for future rules. Um, apparently, to fight with a combat train mount. You need to make a DC 10 ride check. Yeah. That's, only, that's just directing it to attack during battle. Yeah, what I'm seeing... Um, I'll send you the page I'm looking at. Um, says that you need to make a... Uh, hold on, I'll send you the page. Yeah. I'll be right back, guys. Or back as quick as I can. So DC let me know. Check. Let me know what uh, my shared expenses are. Okay. Yeah, that's the feet I saw already, and there's that. Okay, so DC5 check just to move the horse while you're using your hands to attack. DC5 right check to uh, stay in the saddle when you get attacked. Yeah, okay, so it's, it's not that difficult, but it's still a chance of failing if you have no right skill at all. So what are we even doing right now? I'm not trying to be rude, but I, I'm i just asking because I honestly, we keep jumping all over the place and I really don't know what was going on right now. Okay, well we're just heading to the various uh, food supplies now, just to... Um, okay, I didn't know if we just went on an impromptu break and that's why you guys were talking about that or what was going on. No, we it basically up. finishing up our prep work. Ah, trade goods. It should come under there, I think. So we have... All of this stuff. There's flour. So yeah, two silver pieces. No, copper pieces. There's coffee. Beans. Oh my god, this is so... Okay. So, say... In total, you buy all of this stuff for cooking and eating and <coughs> etc. I'm gonna round up the trade goods to say, like, you buy what is it, like, 10 Wooden spices, 10 golds worth of the basics. Okay, and that includes the book, basic cookbook. Uh, the book will probably just be another gold piece. All right, I can afford that. Yeah. And then... And then, ra I guess, rations as well, in case you don't have the opportunity to cook something. Well, these are to... I'm not covering the rations, so... Mm -hmm. These are to supplement the rations. Okay. Yeah, so we kind of got distracted... Food. But yeah, this is the, the, basically you pack up on ingredients to cook when you can, but then you also pack up on rations for when you're going into uh, somewhere 
like a dungeon or something, pretty much. Mm -hmm. So let's see, what sort of rations would you... Just regular rations and trail. And that's per 24 hours, so... There's how many of us? Um, six, six, seven. No, I think we're down to s uh, six now that Kreesha's headed off. I just need to go find a token. So one, two, three, four, five, six, yeah. Okay. So. Uh, six of us, so that would be six per day. So that's three gold pieces probably, per day. Could probably count on it being a week's worth. So three per day, so twenty-one golds worth of rations. Good thing we got the medium wagon. I'm going up in wagon. A lot of shit <laughs> to be calling around. Yeah. How much was it again? 21 gold. Okay. And if you wanted to get two weeks worth, which would be 42, that's just. You expect to at least not go through that much between towns. If we did, I really have to question who the black hole is in the group. <laughs> it's like, okay, who's got the hollow legs? <laughs> and this. Um, well, we're also <laughs> supposed to be hunting to supplement this stuff. So. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So if you go through a week's worth, when we have issues, yeah. And um, I guess Enfys would want to swing for a bit of because you said you were low on cheese, or did you sort that out already? He, he did that last week. Did he? Okay. Oh yeah, he got the the wheel selection, didn't he? Yeah. Yeah, multiple wedges in one big wheel. <laughs> Sorry. Okay, so that's done. So we got our supplies. Tuffy's gone over Where? to the warehouse. And... <laughs> For once, we are fully prepared to go on an adventure. Yeah, like we actually took this whole getting supplies and stuff pretty seriously. I kind of like that. <laughs> like some people, like a lot of people just be like, yeah, we got supplies, we leave, we whatever. <laughs> to be honest, I'm more in that second camp. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Well, now that we've gotten all of our supplies, all we have to do is resupply every time. Yeah, we come so down. so it's, uh, after this point, we just go, we resupply. How much yeah. would it be? This much? Okay, we got more of the same. Yeah. Um, Unless we're getting specialty items from now on, we never have to go through this crap again. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So uh, Tuffy goes over. Um, I guess you guys are just kind of like waiting at the, the transport. Section and there's Duffy and there's Bruiser and Resi Phoenix catches up with her. <laughs> and a wizard decided to leave, stay behind, so we went to go back to get him. Yeah. So you make your way to the warehouse and enter, and uh, the usual stable hand and basically the depot. Manager looks at you and goes, uh, what you be needing today? Um, well, I want to buy another horsey and we need to buy a wagon. Okay. We got quite a few different size wagons. We got your, your light work, your heavy work, and your, well, big goddamn wagons. I, I think somewhere in the medium range would be good. All right. You'll need a good two horses to carry, uh, to to pull that, to carry it. Fucking wagon just <laughs> on the back of the horses. <laughs> uh, um, and would you be looking for another just uh, riding horse? Well, I was kind of hoping for something I could take into combat if I needed. Alright, this will be over here. Then he gets up and he goes to a different part of the, the stables. And you, you're seeing these kind of bigger, kind of more sharp-eyed, less... Um, twinkly-eyed horses, pretty much. <laughs> A lot less derp. <laughs> mm. They're, you know, they're, they're a bit older. They've spent the time being trained. And they're looking good for it, pretty much. 
So, writing goods and services, transports. She's gonna want a uh, uh, light combat trained horse. Have you already got the page up? Uh, yeah, I do. It's 110 gold. 110 gold. Okay. And then we said the medium wagon was how much? 75, I thought. Okay. That's under vehicles. Okay. Yeah, 75 gold. And then the horse, uh, 110, was it? Yeah, yeah, so it should be like 185 total. Alright. Alright, well, uh, do you need any... I mean, these are all combat trained and come with the basic leather gear, but did you want any finer armor for him? No, I think we can just start with the basic gear for now. I'll, uh, I'll get something better if I, if I discover that I really like taking him into battle. So he's got, you know, the saddle with a bit of extra uh, thick leather hanging over the uh, various parts and kind of got the the mane under what looks almost like just, you know, bit of leather, bit of leather, bit of leather, just joined all the way down, kind of like laminar. And uh, eye guards, or just basically like blinkers. And that'll come to, uh, it comes to, well, since we uh, fix all of our combat trade mounts with a, a bit of armor up front, it's just a little bit more expensive. The total for the wagon and the horse come to 190. Um, question. Yep. Does anyone know a Mary Ingle? No. M-A-R-I-I-N-G-L-E? No. Because I just got... Skype contacted by them. Oh, I've been getting a Skype friend request from random fucking people. Yeah. It's probably a bot. I'm gonna just decline. It's, gonna, it's trying to infect your computer it's a, for DDoS attacks or something. Okay, so 190 we said? Mm -hmm. Alrighty then. She'll hand over the money. Good doing business with you. All right, well, let's go get you them all hooked up. Uh, I mean, I guess you could pick a wagon. These are all the, the medium ones, and he has someone getting the, the new horse ready and also getting your horse from the yeah. stables. And uh, he goes to the wagon section. It kind of looks like a freaking, you know, like a caravan lot. <laughs> got, like, the little ones here, medium ones here, big ones there. Those are the medium, and you've got... I mean, they're all of pretty much the same uh, design, but I guess you can pick your favorite type of wood because like they're all made from pretty strong woods, but from different sources. So therefore, there's some that are darker wood, lighter wood. Yeah, she'll she'll just pick one. It doesn't really matter what it looks like. Yeah. Whatever okay. whatever looks looks good and suitable for the job. Yeah, you pick out a functional looking one and. Uh, it's just a good solid oak construction, and hey, you got a wagon. So they get a guy to roll it out, and well, a couple of guys to roll it out, and the horses are hooked up to it. And your mount's kind of like, ooh, this is different. What's going on? Hey, I got thingies. <laughs> They're hooking me up to this thing. And you know, the horse, your your mount looks to the new combat horse and just kind of snorts at him. <laughs> Whisper to the horse, you've been replaced with a better model. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> so once you've got all of that, you can just ride it. Well, you need to make a hand or check for uh, getting in the driver's seat and uh, commanding both horses to go at the same speed. Do, 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 do. I can do that. I have plus it. Okay. So I think it's uh, handle animal unless you're sitting on the horse, then it's a ride. Ooh, that wasn't very good. But it's your first time. It's your first time, and also I was only going for like a DC 10, just for basic movement. Like, they're, they, they, you have to you take a bit to try and get them in sync, but eventually they're matching pace. 
She okay. talks to him too, like, no, no, no. At the same time, come on, and try to try to get together, work it together. Come on. He's taller than me. Says the It's difficult. You can do it. I believe in you. Okay, I just gotta figure out. I do like a step and a bit for every step he does, and then there we go. And then she latches face. So like the uh, the clip clops are asynchronous because of uh, the height difference between the horses, and therefore the length of strides they can do. So you make your way back to town. You show your pass for the the freight um, elevator, and they head up to this big door and slide it to the side and uh, you get in this pretty much almost like a like I got a call I need to take a okay. minute and it's basically a, a small very like small warehouse sized definitely designed for taking multiple wagons or transport vehicles at a time and uh, you stay there for about 20 minutes because they've got to load everybody else on getting everybody lined up, kind of like loading up a ferry and then take the trip down and then get everybody out in an organized manner. It's not as regular or as quick and easy as just the person elevator. But yeah, you make your way back to the, tr um, to the, uh, the trade hall. And then somebody sees you come in and it's like, alright, this way in here. He uh, guides you up this road to here to come in the back where there's that clearing. Uh, and th there you see the rest of the party with the, the trade goods guy who's got all his stuff ready, and as has all the other cooking supplies and all that, just ready to go. And there's a couple of guys just waiting uh, to load up for you. And oh, um, while everyone else was waiting, Tom wanders off, and by the time he comes back, Kiki will have just arrived, and he'll hand everyone kebabs on a stick. I'm back. Welcome back. Thank you. Got lunch for everyone, basically. Yeah. He see like Rising Phoenix takes hers and bites it, and he's like, "You always get these. You really like these, don't you?" <laughs> <laughs> they are convenient. Mm. Tuffy will nibble a little bit and share some of the meat and stuff with the other animals. Mm. Okay, so uh, the guys load up your, your wagon for you, get everything situated and kind of compartmentalized. Like, you know, you got camp stuff here, cooking stuff there, boxes on the bottom, yeah. sacks on the top, you know. And it, they also leave room for you guys to get on because, you know, you're traveling in it. And once that's all done, you're ready to go. Hooray! Hooray! And so heading up the, uh, the eastern main road, you'll make your way up here and out the sea. And you get to go along the nice... Uh, cliffside coastal road out of the town or cliff top coastal road sorry and now we transition to the world map which I don't have yet <laughs> <laughs> all right well loading so I guess Enfys would kind of try to climb up so he can help navigate yeah I'm just gonna quickly get this because looking everything up uh, in the back, Tom will start reading the cookbook. Okay. Yeah, as we set off, Tuffy's going to be, like, talking to her horses, and especially to her new horse. She's like, we're going to go on a trip, we're going to meet people, we might fight some things, it's going to be awesome. <laughs> he, he's not... I got a hammock, it's amazing. <laughs> He's not as grouchy as I pretended he was going to be. He's, you know, he's kind of just got a bit more of a aware attitude of sounds and everything as they're going along the road compared to the kind of weird as walking horse attitude. 
and he's uh, he's uh, yeah, he's just a nice, not middle aged, but a little bit older, trained up horse. And that makes that how wide? Okay. Where's the grid? Show me the grid. Show me the money! I'm trying to see where our demo is going to be held for tomorrow because they had to move it. It was supposed to be outside and we were supposed to have tons of room and now it's supposed to rain so they've moved us inside and we're not going to have like any room at all. Well, shit. Well, that's poopy. Yeah, because we were supposed to be doing um, <laughs> dancing as well, which takes a little bit of room and we were going to okay. teach people dances and uh, yeah, we won't have room to do that now. It's going to be annoying. All right. Well, I'm calling break here while I just set up the roadmap. Yay, break! I need more soda anyway. Yeah. Be right back! Yeah, yeah, break time. And now the monotony is out of the way, we can get that going. If you didn't see the note I put in Skype, um, I'll be able to game as long as we need, because it turns out my plans tonight fell through, so we're good. Yeah. Okay, well, I need to not go on for too long anyway, just because I'm off to my mother's tomorrow, so... Okay, that's up to you. I just don't have to immediately leave at a certain time anymore. Okay. Now you just have to casually leave at an uncertain time. And sorry for those who was completely not interested in the details of getting supplied, as Badger voiced. It's just, uh, <laughs> I don't know, I was, I was all up for just saying you get the supplies, but people were like, okay, we're going to get this and that and that. So I'm like, okay, I'll just play it out. <laughs> Well, we don't want to. We don't want to hand you an excuse to screw us. Uh, true, mm. true. I guess you used to play. We don't. Vicious DMs. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I guess. Uh, I'm not as interested in the uh, the survival aspect as much as the adventure in combat uh, of a, of a campaign as the adventure in role playing uh, of the uh, character interaction. I should say. Yeah. This is character interaction. Boring character interaction. <laughs> Where it's just buying, like, a whole bunch of supplies. And we're discussing but, but, it amongst it? ourselves. <sighs> right, I'm trying to move that. Oh. I picked up the map. There we go. To the token layer, please. Thank you. Right, now let me copy and paste you guys. And hopefully it takes the dog this time, because I know he's in that bloody pile. That's a bit mean saying the dog. Bruiser. <laughs> okay, so there. There. Oh, oh, wait, no. Enfys said he'll go up the front to help. Yeah, because I'm the one who has yeah. the map and knowledge, geography, and enough survival that I'm probably the best one for navigating. Okay. Oh, this seven I of us. New knowledge five. geography would come in handy. <laughs> I know this seven of us, not six, but oh well. And what's the matter, Kel? You got er. I figure I'm just gonna familiarize myself with what's where in the wagon without rearranging it. Uh, no. Are you muted? Am I? No. Um. Hell. Her microphone's cut out. Apparently she's been talking, which is... I don't know. No, we can't hear you. We can't hear you right now. Unplug it, plug it back in again. Is it a blue-style microphone? Made by the Blue Corporation? No, it's a headset microphone. 
Oh, okay. Log yeah, Logitech, yeah. Those are usually more stable than that. Switch your default microphone to something else and back again. Let's see if it's a, just the driver acting up. Oh. Oh, so that oh. wire might have got messed up. It's a wiring problem. Yeah, it had been fine until now. Oh, fucky doodle. I guess you might have to use the fucking camera microphone. Yeah. And hopefully it doesn't chipmunk you. Because <laughs> that happens sometimes with that thing. Last time I had earphones cut out on me. Yeah, they'd been cutting out in one ear and then they pretty much stopped working. Had to get a new one. Okay, no, no, I can say that you did that, I didn't mean to, I mean, if it's just the fact that your microphone was cutting out that caused that, but, yeah, so you, we, you swung by the temple, I guess while waiting for the wagon, and loading up and all that, so, you dropped some gold at the temple, you were offered some holy water if you needed any more, because you splashed them in the dungeon, it's like, oh, thank you for your donation, do you need any more holy water? I wanted to tip the loaders a silver each. Okay. They take it, palm it, pocket it, and just be like, wow. Thank you, ma'am. Mario Kart 8! Mario Kart 8, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so suddenly, all the, once they've got tipped, all the, the dock workers go and buy Mario Kart 8 and just have a game. <laughs> <laughs> How many guys did we have loading? I'm curious. Um, uh, just a couple of guys, just two. Otherwise, it gets messy trying to coordinate with one another. Happy ferret, happy ferret. I am such a happy ferret. I'm gonna start hitting things with the hammer. Oh, are you on? You sound like you're still on your headset, my friend. Yeah, I, I am. I managed to get it to work by unplugging it and plugging it back in a few times, but it's just the idea. Yeah, yeah. Not a happy paladin right now. <coughs> so, Odin. Yes. My, uh, one of my professors is English, and she went back home during, um, spring break, and she brought me goodies from England, because I asked. Oh, nice. So, I have, um, two boxes of jammy dodgers and a shit ton of arrow bars. Nice. Nice. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. It makes me happy, and I'm about to dig into them and have my very first ever jammy dodger. Oh, yeah. What is a jammy dodger? It's a... Basically, a biscuit with jam in between two sections, and I forget if it has like a little bit of like uh, cream in it as well. Not cream, but like. I think it's just jam. I think it is just jam, but I know there are ones that have like jam and a bit of like. She just got me like the original raspberry flavor, so. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's like shortbread cookies with jam in them. It's really tasty. <clears throat> oh, cool. Let's see. Somebody Let's see if they are part. as tasty as they look like. Mm. 
Oh my god, that is amazing. <laughs> it's the great thing we call sugar instead of sweetness and stuff. <laughs> I know, in, in America you can occasionally, like depending on where you live and how big of a Hispanic population there is, you can find Mexican Coke which has um, cane sugar instead of the corn syrup. It's so much better. Yeah. You can also get uh, pep uh, uh, Pepsi throwback, which has actual cane sugar in it, too. Yeah. Okay, okay Jamie Dodgers are officially awesome. It's... <clears throat> then again, I mean, I don't really... I don't drink the... Whenever I get Pepsi, I get Pepsi Max cherry because it's fucking amazing. Oh, he does have caffeine. I thought Max was no sugar, no caffeine. It's just no sugar. Okay, it's good to still have caffeine. I've discovered that there are a few um, websites that cater to um, importing British foods to America. Mm -hmm. And they seem to have pretty reasonable prices, so I think I'm going to have to start ordering stuff on a regular basis and having it delivered. Because, like, I, I much prefer, like, crap you can find over there than stuff you can find here. Mm -hmm. Like, get yourself, like, a Capri's Dairy Milk. <laughs> Unfortunately, here's the shit thing. You can't import Cadbury's anymore because Hershey bought Cadbury's and they're not allowing, like, real Cadbury's to be imported to America anymore. I've had... I told you that, Odin. Yeah, yeah, I fucking forgot about that complete shenanigans. Yeah, you're gonna have to do something about that. But yeah, we, we totally blame you, Odin. It's your fault. My friend, <laughs> uh, my ex-girlfriend actually like goes to America a lot because her dad's American. And she brought back Hershey's Kisses. And I have one, I'm like, the fuck is this? <laughs> yeah, it's always funny. There's like a whole like section of YouTube videos that are just like people trying foods from other countries. And it's really funny to watch, like, British people try American chocolate for the first time. They'll be like, I got a Hershey's bar, or I got some Hershey's Kisses or something like that. And they'll try it, and they're like, what the fuck did you people do to chocolate? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Pretty much that was my reaction. She's like, well, I like it. I'm like, well, good. Because <laughs> otherwise I don't want to do it with the waist. I'm just not eating I, I am Well, a big, Hershey bars I am a aren't that fan. good anyway. Yeah, I am a big fan of dairy milk, though. Mm. Um, and you can occasionally find dairy milk in my area, so it's 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 all right. But Aero bars you can't find anywhere near where I live, and yep. I'm addicted to Aero bars. So I guess you're fine importing Nestle stuff. Yeah, yeah, you yeah okay. you can't you can import anything except like Cadbury's. I'm not sure. I see who who did the Yorkie bar because the Yorkies are freaking great. York peppermint? No, that's not a Yorkie bar in my mind. Yeah, so if you ever have any ideas for, like, snacks you think I should try, let me know and I'll try to import some, because, like, dude, I am all about some British snacks. Okay. There's also German chocolate, because... Oh, oh, oh. oh, there it is. Yeah. Yorkie is just... It's kind of funny. They've got, like, the whole campaign. It's the fact that because it's so massive and chunky that it was, like... It's, like, manly chocolate. But, you know, they do it... Because it's British, it's... For the laughs, therefore they allow the slightly sexist for because of the sex, for, because of the uh, the humor of it. We're not kind of stickers for that in advertisement. No, in America, if you see something that's like it's manly, like it's totally serious. Like there's nobody's ever making Mirror. fun of that over here. No, I mean, yeah. I mean, literally, we had adverts where girls were like dressing up as men um, to go buy uh -huh. a Yorkie bar. <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> It's kind of hilarious, but that, that, that's some seriously just good chocolate. My sister's, uh, ex-boyfriend actually, uh, came from London. Mm -hmm. Um, he came over here and he tried American cheese. In America. Um, specifically and he said never American again. cheese or just cheese like the made cheese in America? Slices. The cheese oh. slices. Oh my god, he tried the worst shit ever. 